JCB's new engine will change everything, and we mean everything. It's a new dawn in the world of heavy machines and vehicles, and JCB is currently leading that charge. The automaker has started working on a hydrogen engine for its tractors and heavy machinery. The question that follows now is, will this engine actually work? Will it change the industry like it's supposed to? Join us on this video to learn more about this engine and answer all your questions. JCB, one of the leading agricultural engine makers, has pulled off something truly impressive. They have managed to convert their conventional engines to run on compressed hydrogen, which means zero carbon emissions. And the best part, it doesn't affect the engine's performance at all. Imagine a gas-fired four-cylinder 4.8 liter engine that generates the same power and torque as a diesel max 448. That's exactly what JCB has accomplished. And here's the icing on the cake. The modified engine won't cost any more than the original and it can even be retrofitted into existing machines with a little bit of tinkering. Although it's still in the development stage, JCB is making great progress. They're aiming to have the engine ready for pre-production by the end of 2023. That's quite impressive, considering it took just two and a half years for a team of 100 engineers to bring this project to life. It's exciting to see how JCB is pushing the boundaries of engine technology and taking significant steps toward reducing carbon emissions in the agricultural sector. Their innovative approach is definitely something to keep an eye on. But it is important that you know that the journey of transitioning farm machinery away from diesel is far from a walk in the park. It's like a tug of war between the big players in the market, each with their own unique approach. So check this out. John Deere is going all in on electric powertrains, while New Holland is putting their faith in biomethane combustion, which means that JCB is out there doing their thing as a lone ranger, taking a different path altogether. They're navigating this challenging terrain on their own terms. It's like they've got a secret weapon up their sleeve. According to JCB chairman, Lord Anthony Bamford, sticking with combustion engines is a no-brainer when it comes to delivering the high power and torque needed for agricultural applications. Plus, they have loads of knowledge and experience with these engines, from pistons to crankshafts, and so do their loyal dealers and customers who've been tinkering with them for ages. But here's the exciting part. JCB believes that hydrogen-powered engines won't break the bank. They can leverage existing components and production facilities, which means the cost won't be any different from what we're used to. So there's no need to worry about the price shooting up. To have a better understanding of JCB's effort in cutting carbon emissions, you need a bit of background information. The company's power systems division has been hard at work since 2004, tirelessly working on reducing nitrous oxides and those pesky particulate tailpipe emissions. It hasn't been cheap though. Just the transition from stage four to stage five limits alone has cost them a hefty 100 million pounds. So let's talk about how the engine of JCB's innovative prototype 3CX backhoe works. It's quite fascinating. JCB has actually managed to maintain much of the standard combustion engine design, which is pretty impressive. The bottom half of the engine, including the sump and the four cylinders with a capacity of 1.2 liters each, remains identical to the existing diesel max engine. They have also kept the same cooling pack and service points, and the engine still relies on a conventional variable geometry turbocharger. However, there have been some significant changes in other areas. The old cylinder head and the 2000 bar common rail injection system have been replaced by a completely different setup specifically designed for injecting gas instead of liquid fuel. To ignite the fuel, the engine utilizes spark plugs. The fuel itself comes from five storage vessels made of a combination of aluminum and carbon fiber, each weighing around one kilogram. These storage vessels are located on the JCB 3CX backhoe prototype. The fuel is then fed to four injectors mounted on a pressurized rail. Now, this part is still a work in progress, as it requires laser-like precision to achieve a consistent mixture of light hydrogen and heavy air. This precise mix is crucial for ensuring a consistent power output. It all happens within a remarkable time frame of just 72 milliseconds between fuel injection and combustion. The timing of the spark is a crucial factor in engine performance. If it's too early, you'll experience knocking, which is definitely not good for the engine's longevity. On the other hand, if the spark happens too late, the fuel won't burn efficiently or completely. Now let's talk about hydrogen combustion. Back in the day, BMW and Ford made some attempts with their Hydrogen 7 Series and Tiny Research Vehicle, respectively. However, JCB believes they found a solution to one of the major challenges in hydrogen combustion. They've managed to create an incredibly lean mix of 1% hydrogen and 99% air. This fuel light blend addresses the issue of high temperatures that leads to excessive nitrogen oxide emissions. By keeping the temperature down, they minimize the need for a selective catalytic reduction module to clean up those emissions. The best part is that this process doesn't produce any carbon dioxide. Instead, the main byproduct is water, which needs to be effectively removed through the exhaust system. 
To ensure everything runs smoothly, owners will likely need to use specialized engine oil. This oil should contain more anti-corrosion agents to prevent any issues with emulsification. It should also have fewer carbon dispersants since hydrogen burns much cleaner. Now let's move on to performance. JCB currently has a team of technicians and lab coats carefully monitoring various aspects such as emissions, power, torque, and fuel consumption. They're also investigating how factors like cold weather and altitude influence these parameters. So far, the power and torque curves of the hydrogen prototype are nearly identical to those of the diesel-powered version. When we had the chance to see the first prototype in action at 1500 RPM, it was difficult to tell it apart from a regular diesel engine. The only noticeable difference was a slightly softer engine note, dominated by the turbo resembling that of a petrol engine. But now, there is a catch. The production of hydrogen fuel is still limited. It only accounts for about 5% of the world's energy supply, and half of that is what we call gray hydrogen. Gray hydrogen is produced from natural gas, and the process of making it creates a lot of carbon emissions. Not great for the environment. But don't worry, the government has a plan. They want to phase out gray hydrogen in favor of green hydrogen. Green hydrogen is produced by using excess electricity from offshore wind or solar farms to split water into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Currently, green hydrogen only makes up about 4% of the supply, but there's a lot of potential to increase that. In fact, wind farms are paid millions of pounds a day to switch off their turbines when there's more energy being produced than needed. The UK government recently announced its hydrogen strategy, which aims to have hydrogen account for 20 to 35% of the UK's energy consumption by 2050. Exciting stuff, right? However, it's worth noting that using electricity as a power source is still more efficient than using hydrogen. Hydrogen combustion is only about 20 to 25% efficient, while hydrogen fuel cells can reach 25 to 30% efficiency, and electricity can be as high as 80 to 85% efficient. So, in theory, you could power four electric vehicles with the same amount of energy it takes to power one hydrogen combustion engine. But companies like JCB are working on solutions. They envision a supply chain similar to diesel, with mobile gas trailers delivering hydrogen to rural locations. To store and use the gas, farm businesses would need a refueling station with the necessary equipment. The process of refueling a machine would take less than 10 minutes. Some landowners might even consider having an on-site solar farm to produce the electricity needed for hydrogen production. It's an interesting alternative for those looking to be more self-sufficient. Now, you're probably wondering when you can get your hands on one of these hydrogen-powered engines. JCB plans to start pre-production by the end of next year and gradually introduce the engines into their agricultural and construction ranges. However, the number of engines they produce will depend on the availability of hydrogen supply and the development of supporting infrastructure. So there you have it. Hydrogen fuel is an exciting prospect, but there are still some hurdles to overcome, like reducing the cost of hydrogen and improving infrastructure. It's all part of the journey toward a more sustainable and economic future.